So good afternoon uh, ladies and gentlemen just um, continuing on with a bit of a post I made the other day showing a BMW R90S with the um, with two of the rocker shafts uh, in upside down and I thought while I'm putting all the, I, it's gone I finished that job but I've got another one that I'm building an engine on and uh, it's only done 120,000 kilometers it's an R80 GS and uh, I found some stuff on that which surprised me actually but I just thought I'd spend a minute and show you a couple of things these are the rocker shafts these two are from an early um, bike and uh, out of the 90s actually and when they're made they're actually drilled at the factory because as most of you will know the oil that lubricates the rocker gear and from the slash six on they had needle uh, roller bearings in them instead of brass bushes um, it comes down the top stud or top two studs on each side of the block uh, the stud doesn't fill the hole uh, through the cylinder block and the cylinder head and the oil fills up the cavity that remains around the stud and flows down into the rocker shaft via the pillow block and the shaft in the old ones was drilled like this it was drilled through from the top you can see the hole in the middle there if I get the light right there it is and then it was drilled through the oil cascaded under pressure down into the top needle roller bearing and then flooded down through into the bottom needle roller bearing now the two shafts were upside down in that bike and you can see there quite graphically the damage that was done the one on the on the nearest to me was the exhaust valve one and it was absolutely just destroyed the bearings uh, unfortunately I didn't think to keep them they were blue and it had been going on like that for some maybe 11,000 kilometers um, there was enough oil probably oozing around the pillow block to give it some form of lubrication but the wear in there was horrendous now the repair that I did on that isn't really a, a permanent repair in my view at some point the head should come off I believe there will be some significant wear in the valve exhaust valve particularly stem and the guide uh, but that's for a later discussion we got it running and it's got oil coming out of it and that was um, that was the object of that exercise I had to replace two shafts um, and four needle roller bearings now this is a needle roller bearing out of one of the shafts it wasn't too bad some of the needles fell out when I was um, throwing it in the bin and then I decided I'd retrieve it important to note that these have got a rolled edge and a flat edge and if you are trying to fit them you must put the rolled edge in and press it into the rocker and it must go in a depth about what I would call an eighth of an inch to a little more so maybe a mil, a mil and a half something like that below the surface top and bottom because if you don't if you get it too close and the bottom of this pillow block here this bottom of this needle roller bearing rubs backwards and forwards on the pillow block it will eventually rub through and guess what the pillow block's got a slot in it and as these little needle roller needle rollers come around and line up with the slot they are able to drop through fall down the push rod tube into the sump get sucked up by the oil pump and destroy the oil pump housing and numerous other things and I know a couple of mechanics that are watching this video who will verify that that is in fact the truth this is the little tool that I made many years ago uh, I had to refresh it in a lathe a few years ago because I had taken to using it as a drift which I don't do anymore because it caused me too much grief but it is for this purpose these come with a little packer in them so the needle rollers can't can't um, fall out I'm just going to take the camera away for a second and you use that there push it through it retains the needle roller now in my haste um, I've actually put that on backwards so the rolled end is at this end at this end here uh, it should be facing the other way and you use a press or a vice to push that through one from each side I also use that this end here is slightly smaller than the inside diameter of a rocker so you can push it through to push the old needle rollers out now that brings me to the new type uh, of uh, shaft and this isn't a very good example I have to say this is some aftermarket one I would, I would guess but they normally have this one has a little tiny dent 
dot, see there where my thumbnail is? But the factory ones have got quite a big obvious dot. Now, it doesn't really matter because of the way this is drilled, whether the dot goes out or in, it matters very little. Same really on the, on the, uh, on the old one, but the dot must be at the top and the silver solder on the early one must be at the top. If it's not, it will starve for oil because the hole in these ones, there's only one drilling in these, BMW saved a few bob and they put it in about 45 degrees from the back to the side. And if it's not at the top, it won't let the oil through to the needle roller bearings and it will destroy first those and later if you keep going, if you're really dedicated to being a complete and utter waste of space, you will destroy your whole engine. Um, it's really important if you're playing around with that that you read and understand or watch this movie or anything you like but get them in the right way and then before you put the engine back together leave the rocker covers off, earth the plugs, spin the engine on the starter motor and check the oil flow. You should do that at every major service when you take the rocker covers off get some catch trays, ground the plugs spin the engine and make sure before you drain the old oil that there is oil coming out of both rockers on both sides it should on the starter motor uh, generally flow in a, in, a, in a good stream out of the bottom once you get it primed that's one of the main reasons I'm making this video tonight now the other one came as a bit of a surprise to me um, this bike I just took it apart to do push rods. The owner asked me while it was apart, seeing as it was age and it had never really been apart, to um, put a set of rings in it. We did um, um, big end bearings and uh, gudgeons. We um, had the valves completely replaced, all of them with new OEM valves, guides, springs and collets. So the heads were fully rebuilt. And the barrels looked like brand new, the pistons looked like brand new, they measured, everything was lovely. Except when I went to put it back together and I turned the rockers over, these faces were all pitted along the edge where they touch on the top of the valve. They were actually quite badly pitted for the kilometres of the bike and the reason for that became pretty obvious after thinking about it for a while. Um, dry starts, not a lot of use, low mileage, 40 years of age, no oil, engine starts, tappets hitting hard on the top of the valves and eventually they went through the case hardening. Fortunately with these they've got quite a, 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 a significant heated uh, treated area in hardness and so long as they aren't too badly damaged if you have a competent machine shop they can radius grind the tips and bring them back uh, just like new. We do that more often than I'd like to think about. Um, it's surprising that the high mileage bikes with regular oil changes very often don't need that treatment but the low mileage ones that don't get used much and get dry started and then ridden around for a little while and put away they seem to suffer the most of all and here's another little thing that I'll just show you this is a a sports rocker a sports tappet adjuster as they call it and it's not really it's lightweight um, but I use these as an alternative to the factory ones they're a little less expensive and they're much more convenient. They've got an Allen bolt in the end, they've got a lock nut on them, and they are uh, a lot lighter than the others, a lot easier to set. If you keep on doing as previous owners on this bike done have, have done, which is over tightening the lock nut, you will stretch the threads on this side of the rocker. And when you do that, you can never set the tappets easily because they always bind up, the, the stretch threads bind up against the lock nut and on the inside edge of this uh, drilled and, and tapped part of the rocker. And it is a pain. Now if you buy a new set, whether you buy original equipment or these ones which come from Siebenrock, if you're going to take them out, wind the adjuster all the way as far through. I'm just going to stop for a second again. while I, It's very hard when you do this on your own. So just talk amongst yourselves, there you go. Wind the adjuster so that the bit that goes onto the push rod is as far up as it'll go. Take the lock nut off and then get a hacksaw or a, 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 grind, a cutting disc and cut through the threads as, as near as practicable 
to the rocker without touching it. You don't want to touch it, but you want to cut all the damaged threads away. Because if you don't do that and you take the, the adjuster out, those damaged threads will destroy the threads in here. And if you want a real fright, find out how much one of these little babies cost you. Anyway, there's a couple of things for you to ponder on. It's been a while since I did a movie. Uh, rockers, oil flow, tappet adjusters, don't over tighten them. Get a tension wrench, they're not dear. And um, if you get a good one, like a 3 8 Warren and Brown, it'll cost you a few hundred dollars really, but it will go down to about eight foot pound and do 90% of what you need around your bike uh, very accurately. Not that I'm working for Warren and Brown or anything. Meantime, ride safely, stay well, have a great, great 2020.